Hi guys, it's Legionero. Welcome back to my channel and I would like to welcome all of my new subscribers. Thank you for subscribing to the channel. If you have not subscribed to the channel, please hit that subscribe button and also hit the notification bell so you'll be notified each time I post a new video. So, I must start out by apologizing to new people. <laughs> um, what you are about to see is not my normal practice. Um, so yeah, feel free to watch other videos <laughs> and just take this one with a grain of salt. All right. Anyway, finally, the tutorial for Quick Sew 4276. So let me just say that this bag broke me. I don't want to sew anymore for at least two months. Now, I'm not going to stop sewing for two months. However, that's how I feel after doing this tutorial. <laughs> I had to break it up into multiple parts. So there are about six or seven videos. I can't remember off the top of my head, but um, I'm breaking it up into parts. I will post um, parts one and two today, and then I'll post the rest. Um, so three will be tomorrow for the next day, so on and so forth. Um, so there are some things that I need to tell you about this pattern because I did um, run into some hiccups. I made some mistakes and I want to make sure I tell you those so you won't have the same issues. Um, first things first, watch all the videos <laughs> before you start to do anything. All right. Um, well, you can cut your pattern pieces. You can do that <laughs> um, and interface your pattern pieces, uh, which I will show you in this video. Um, I can put this down. Um, but yeah, watch the videos. I broke them up into different parts so they won't be too long. I'm hoping they're not too long. I haven't actually edited the videos yet, <laughs> but I'm hoping that they are not too long um, and you'll be able to, you know, watch each video. But do, do, do watch the videos before you um, sew this bag because I did make a few mistakes. Um, so I know I said in my review of the bag that on some of the pattern pieces, it's better to make the markings on the front of the bag. Um, so the front piece and the, so the main uh, fabric that you're gonna use for the outside of your bag, the, the fabric that everybody's gonna see, is best to make your markings on the outside, meaning the right side of your fabric. I made the markings on both sides. That way I would know um, throughout the tutorial which side would be the better preference for me. Um, but yeah, anything that's on the outside that people are going to see, make your markings on the outside and use something that either goes away. That's, I would say use something that's water soluble because if you use something with heat when you press, that marking is going to go away. So I'll say something that's water soluble. Be on the safe side on your main pieces. You can make your markings on both sides, which is what I did. Um, your linings, you can make the markings for your linings on the wrong side. And um, that's absolutely fine for that. For my strap, um, I, you cut two pieces of your strap. I only made markings on one of my straps and I made it on the front and the back and I did need both those markings on the front and the back um, because some of the markings um, went well on the back but this one right here I needed a marking on the front so I would know where to place this part of the strap so um, yeah you only need to make markings on one piece of the strap but make them on the front and the back um, again the lining pieces make your markings on the back your pattern piece number four, which is your um, zipper pocket pieces, um, make those markings on, I would say, you can make them on the front and the back um, because you're gonna have to line it up anyway. You're gonna have to line it up with this marking, this marking on the front. So um, if you just make them on the back, that's fine. But I made mine on the front and the back of the pocket. All right, so just kind of remember the main bag, the front of the front and back of the bag, and the strap. 
You need to make your markings on the outside because you're going to have to place your zipper pockets. There's a zipper pocket here, a zipper pocket on the back, and then you have this pocket on the front. All right. So you're going to need to know where to place these things. And there are a lot of markings. <laughs> okay. So first big, huge mistake I made. I sold my zipper wrong. <laughs> so this bag does not currently zip up. I was so defeated by the time I got to this, I was not about to take this bag apart and sew this zipper right. So what I did, <laughs> I just recut out um, the front and the back piece and sewed them together and I did a demonstration on how to do the zipper correctly. All right, I won't even put the, the part of the video where I sewed the zipper wrong. I won't even put that in the video. I'll just show you this part of how um, to do the zipper correctly. And the zipper is quite confusing. Um, sorry about that. First time I made the pattern, uh, my mom actually had to help me with the zipper because I did not understand the instructions. But I think hopefully I explained it um, clearly. Hopefully. <laughs> um, this part of the strap, um, paras the parachute clip, I did good on that. This part where I um, did the swivel clasp and the slider, I did that upside down. Um, it doesn't affect the bag or anything like that. It's just when I put the bag, if I were to wear the bag, the right side of the slider is on the back. So you, you would see the back part right here. All right, that's an easy fix. How you see me doing it in the video, just turn your strap slider the opposite way. <laughs> right. Um, other than that, like I said in my review, the bag is not a, a horrible sew. Right. It's just certain parts, the instructions suck. <laughs> um, there's another part, which is, you'll see it in the video. Um, there's two dots on the front piece, I believe. Uh, I think it's the front piece. Let me see. You'll see it in the video, but I want to make sure I tell you this. Um, hopefully my battery does not run out <laughs> while I'm looking for this. Or I have any, oh, the back piece. So on these instructions, and I hope you can see it on the back piece where you're going to place your D-ring and straps. Um, you have to sew to reinforce between those dots. And the first time I did it, I cut in the center of the dots, but you actually cut on that by the last dot. And again, so when you hear me say, um, cut a slit in the center of the dots, don't do that. Um, and I will say it in the video, but I just don't, I don't want you, if you follow me, if you do like I do when you're following a tutorial, you pause and do what they say do, then you start the video back, then you pause. That's how I do it. So I want to make sure I told you on this video that when you get to that part with the D-rings and the strap for the D-rings, don't cut the center slit. You're going to cut the slit at the bottom. All right. Um... And I think I do it in one video, but I don't realize the mistake until um, the next video. And it was only because earlier in the instructions, I didn't understand where to cut the slit. So in number two, where they tell you to reinforce, it tells you to clip and it looks like it's clipped in the center. So that's why I clipped in the center, because that's what it looks like on the pattern instructions. That's why I say these instructions suck. <laughs> um, but then when I got here to number 10, it shows you the right spot where you're supposed to cut the slit. Um, and it's the back piece. So keep that in the back of your mind. Um, other than that, I think that's it. Um, biggest thing is I sewed the zipper wrong. But again, I won't even put that part in here. I'll um, just show you the right I'll just add, when I'm editing, I will add the right way to do the zipper. But 
yeah i'm i'm not doing any more tutorials on commercial bag, handbags <laughs> it will have to be very easy very simple very straightforward i will i'm not volunteering to do any more tutorials on commercial patterns because like i said the instructions suck and i prefer making my own patterns anyway so yeah if i do find some commercial patterns that i think are, are really cute um and easy to sew i may do some i was thinking about starting a patreon but i really need to do some research on patreon and then that could be something where i could do tutorials on commercial patterns like that but that's not anytime soon not even sure when i'm going to start to do any research on that um but yeah so let's get into um making this bag all right guys so let's go over everything you're going to need for this pattern of course you're going to need your pattern quick sew 4276 and everything that i talk about here is on the back of your envelope on the back of your envelope it tells you what you need and how much of it you need all right so please 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 make sure you look at the back of your envelope decide what view you're going to do and it tells you what you need of each thing it has your notions here and the amount of fabric and interfacing that you're going to need for this pattern right so you need your pattern you're going to need some fabric i'm using the same fabric for the lining as well as the outside of the bag it's just easier for me that way and this is a cotton cloth so i'm going to have to um definitely interface this all right you're going to need some interfacing i usually use um, sf 101 but i have a little bit of this left in my stash and i want to go ahead and use it this is mid to heavyweight fusible 931 td um, 10 I will put that in the description box below. This is a mid to heavy weight. It is a little bit too heavy for the lining, but it's okay. I'm trying to get rid of stuff in my stash. <laughs> uh, but I do recommend for linings SF 101 Shape Flex. And that's for my lining fabric. I'm going to use Thermalam for the outside of my bag. So my main outside fabric pieces, I'm using Thermalam. I usually use fusible fleece, but I have, again, this in my stash, and I have a little bit more left, so I'm going to use it up before I start using my fusible fleece. All right. You're going to need four zippers. You're going to need two seven-inch zippers and two nine-inch zippers. You're going to need one D ring, right? I don't know if you can see it, it's black. Right, so you're gonna need one D ring and it'll tell you the size on the pattern. You're gonna need a D ring, just one. You're going to need um, this parachute buckle. You need one of those. You need a strap adjuster or a strap slider, right? One of those. You're going to need a swivel clasp. You're going to need one of those you're going to need some webbing for your strap and you're going to need some elastic all right again the sizes and the amount of everything that you need is on the back of your pattern envelope all right so now i'm going to take out my pieces and see what pieces i'm going to need i am doing view a which is the smaller of the bags so using view a and i'm not color blocking so so for view a your pattern instructions will tell you which pieces you need for the view that you're doing all right, so here on your pattern instructions, it tells you which number of pattern pieces you're going to need. So if you choose A, B, C, you look on here and it'll tell you which pieces you need. So I need P1, 
piece number one, two, three, four, five, and six. All right? So I need pieces one through six for view A. All right, so piece number one. And I hope you can see this. My camera is not aimed like I want it. <laughs> right, so you're gonna need piece number one, which is your front piece. And you're gonna cut one of fabric. On here it has cut one of fabric one, one of fabric two, and two of interfacing. So what that means is you cut one of your main fabric, one of your lying fabric, and whatever interfacing that you're using. Um, so if you're like me and you're using two different types of interfacing, you're cutting, I'm cutting my thermalam for my main piece and my um, lightweight for my lining, all right? But if you're using, let's say you only want to use that mid to heavyweight or whatever it is you're going to use because you don't want a heavy bag, um, the thermalam doesn't make it too heavy or the fusible fleece, but it's up to you, all right? So one main piece, one lining piece, two of interfacing. This is piece number one. Piece number two is the back. Again, you're cutting one of fabric one, one of fabric two, and two of interfacing. So that means I'm cutting one of my main fabric, one of my lining fabric, one of my thermalam, and one of my um, lighter weight interfacing. All right? So one, one, two. <laughs> Piece number three. Piece number three is your side pocket, and you're cutting one of fabric right doesn't say um, to interface this so you're just cutting one of fabric piece number four is your pocket facing you're going to need to cut two of fabric two meaning your lining fabric fabric two is your lining fabric so you're going to cut two of your lining fabric and it doesn't say interface here either so it's up to you whether you want to interface Piece number five. Piece number five, you cut two of fabric two, which is your lining. So for piece number five, you cut two of your lining pieces. And it does not say cut interfacing, so it's up to you if you want to interface this. And you will interface it with your lightweight fabric, not your um, fusible fleece or thermalam, whatever you're going to use. And finally, piece number six. Piece number six is your strap. You cut two of fabric number one, which is your main fabric, and then cut two of interfacing. Now, for my straps, I don't like them to be super duper heavy, so I am going to cut um, two of my main fabric, which is fabric number one, and I'm going to cut two of that mid to heavyweight fabric. I'm not going to interface my strap with the thermalam. I feel like that'll be too heavy. All right. All right. So I'm going to cut out all of my fabric. All right, guys. So I got all my pieces cut out and I also have them marked. So I'm going to go over each piece and the markings with you and tell you what interfacing I use for what pieces. Now, when you get ready to mark a have a ruler handy, um, the pattern instruction says mark on the wrong side of the fabric. I made my markings on both sides of the fabric because I remember I said in my review that having markings on the front of some pieces would have helped me, but I can't remember which pieces those were and I didn't go back and watch my video. Um, so I made my markings on both sides of some of my pattern pieces um, just in case. Um, and if you're going to do that, especially if you're going to mark on the front, make sure you use, this is a friction pen. This goes away with heat. 
um, or make sure you're using something that's water soluble. Um, I'm not sure if there's one that goes away over time with air. Not real sure about all the different marking pens. But for this tutorial, so you all can see my markings, this is a, um, oh gosh, this is a like a crayon coloring pencil. Don't use this on your fabric, <laughs> right? I just used it um, for the sake of the tutorial. Um, and so you all could see my markings. That's the only reason why I use this. Um, what are these called? Oh my gosh, I am having a brain fart right now. But anyway, don't use this crayon pencil thingy. <laughs> all right, but I did use friction pens on some parts of it. So again, make sure you have a ruler, make sure you have your um, fabric marking tools and let me go over each thing with you. So I'm going to count, go backwards. No, piece number six, which is your strap. I marked um, on the front of this. I didn't mark on the back of this because when you get ready to do it, when you place your strap on here, I'm going to need to see that because um, the strap is going on the outside anyway. So, but you can make markings on both sides. If, oh, actually I did. I didn't think I did. Okay. <laughs> So I made markings on both sides and this is a square. I'm just going to kind of eyeball this square. All right. So I made the markings and you can see the markings on your pattern piece. I hope I'm not getting out of the shot. So you have two here, you have your um, square here and you have two here at the bottom. All right. So I only marked on one of these. I didn't mark on both of them. Um, not sure if I'm going to regret not marking on both of these, but for some reason I'm feeling like these are going to go right sides facing, so I only need to mark on one of them. Maybe. We'll see throughout the tutorial. Or I may even, after I do this, I may on the safe side go ahead and mark this other piece as well. Piece number five, only thing you have to do is cut notches. Um, piece number six, you don't have any notches. Piece number four, um, you have notches as well as you have the um, zipper pocket marking. So I did mark that on here. I don't know if you can see it, but it's here. And I marked this on the wrong side because usually when you do your zipper pockets, you have to place your fabrics right side facing. So I marked mine on the wrong side of this. Piece number three. I made my markings on the right side of the fabric. All right. Um, you do have a notch here. You have dots two here at the bottom. We have one here, two here, and two here. And then there's a fold line here. So I made those marks. And now here's where the doozies come in. <laughs> this has a lot of markings. I want to bring this up um, in the shot. All right, so you have two markings here and then there's a stitch line. So I made the two markings and the stitch line. I'll show you in a minute. Um, you have a mark here. You have your zipper mark. You have two on each side here and then you have some notches to cut. All right, so I made all of those marks. I'm not sure if you can see it in the paint, but I did make all of those marks. I drew those lines, drew those lines, made my marks and cut my notches. And I did it on this side as well. I didn't mark the zipper placement on this side because again, when you do zippers, you put them right sides facing anyway. And um, the I made it on the zipper pocket, so. All right. And then piece number one, same thing. You have a ton of markings. And I made those markings on both the front and back pieces as well. And also on the lining for, did I make it? Yep, I made it on the main pieces and the lining. 
Again, I can't remember the first time I made this whether I needed to mark the linings, but I did it anyway just to be on the safe side. All right, so you have your markings here. At the top, this is a square and you have some dots. You have, these are for, this is for the zipper, the outside zipper that you close up your bag. This is for a zipper pocket. Um, you have a notch right here. You have two on each side. And you have one here, one here. And I made all of these markings. This is the back. And I made them on the front as well. All right. And when you're doing this with this piece number one, make sure your square here that you mark is on the opposite end of your notches. Don't make your square on the same end as your notches because that this is the top. Your notches are the bottom. All right. So that is it for this video. Oh. I'm so sorry. <laughs> we go through this real quick. So for piece number one, you cut two. Let me look at this. Right? You cut one of your main fabric, one of your lining fabric, and two of interfacing. So I'm using the lining and the fabric, main fabric, as the same. So on one of my pieces, I put the thermalam. And you can use fusible fleece. On the other piece, I put the lighter weight interfacing, which is my lining. Right, so my linings always have the lighter weight fabric um, interfacing. And the main piece has the thermalam that I use. So that's for piece number one. Piece number two. So for piece number two, you cut one of your main fabric, one of your lining, and I put thermalam on my main and the lighter weight fabric on the lining fabric. All right. Piece number three, I did not cut any interfacing. Four and five, I did not cut any interfacing. And piece number six, I cut out the lighter weight interfacing which you can use SF 101. I'll put all this stuff in the description. Um, but I use the lighter weight um, interfacings on both pieces because you are cutting your main fabric out of your strap because you want your, your, your strap to match your main bag. So you're cutting your main fabric for your strap and I interfaced it with the lighter weight interfacing. SF 101 is a good choice. Alright, now stay tuned for part two and we will start sewing. <laughs> 